Welcome to the today's presentation on politics and administration dichotomy in public administration. This topic is one of the important topic to learn because this is the basis for understanding of public administration. Politics and administration dichotomy, two important contributions are there. One, Woodrow Wilson, two, Frank Z. Goodnow. Because Woodrow Wilson was called as the founder father of the public administration in the world. What is his basic contributions to public administration? Why we are calling him as the founder father of the public administration? Today's presentation, we have to know the importance of the study of public administration, to understand the contributions of Wilson and Goodnow, to identify the differences between politics and administration as per Wilson and Goodnow. Thomas Woodrow Wilson, everybody knows him as the, he was the president of America. He was the person actually behind the League of Nations. He was the governor of, uh, in some of the states in America. He was the president of the Princeton University America. These are one side, but whereas for the public administration concerned, he published an article named as the study of administration in 1887. We are taking that year is the birth of the public administration as a separate study of the discipline in social science. Though public administration was exist as a study in the name of Cameralist in Germany, even in the French as a part of the administrative law, in Britain is a part of the administration law. Everybody used to think public administration is a part of the law because law and order, administration, all this is a part of the society. Woodrow Wilson actually has given a different type of understanding of the public administration. Today's our discussion, presentation, everything is on this particular issue. Woodrow Wilson heralded a new beginning in the thinking on administration. Probably there was an agreement among contemporary professional students of public administration on his essay because this essay was called as a seminal essay in public administration. The title of the essay is The Study of Administration is the most distinguished essay of such brief compass in the history of public administration. Published early in Wilson's career, immediate after completion of his post radiation. He published in 1887 and proved a remarkably accurate prediction of the shape of the things to come. Because many people will write many things, but some people write some of the articles in a particular time which are going to be stand as a lighthouse to the world. Wilson's contributions are like that. Besides this, he published writings that are numerous, among them most important are Congressional Government, A Study in American Politics, The State, Elements of Historical and Practical Politics, Division and Reunion, An Old Master and Other Essays on George Washington, A History of American People in Five Volumes, that was in 1902. All in these papers, it is to be found the explanation of his great popular influence, his genius for simplification of complex issues, arid his mastery of the phrase that makes the idea attractive. Wilson's first analysis of the field and administration presented in his paper, The Study of Administration. Actually, he prepared the three drafts of the paper. First, he has given the title as Notes on Administration. Second, he has given the title on Art of Administration. Third, he has given the title is The Study of Administration. This paper, which was published in 1887 in Political Science Quarterly, regarded as a significant trailblazing effort. The moral tone of Wilson's article reflected the mental setup of the reform period of USA. And it has been a continuing undercurrent in the study of public administration. Even now, Without referring this article, the study of administration, no public administration student, scholar, teacher, 
he is not going to understand what exactly is public administration. That article is called as in a mine of wisdom and practicality of the time of American politics and American societal reforms. Wilson, an ardent reformer and later the president of Civil Service Reform League facilitated the expansion of an ethical sense of public duty beyond the conceptual confines of the civil service and into entire intellectual terrain of public administration. Thus, Wilson was a combination of a political reformer, executive leader, scholar, statesman, politician and administrator. Because he was a lecturer, he wrote this article, later he has become the professor, later he has become the president of the university, later he has become the governor of the state, then he was elected to the president of America. He has received the Nobel Peace Prize at the time of the League of Nations and other things, his contributions to the world. So, people call him as a statesman, politician, administrator, scholar, teacher, leader, reformer. Wilson's contributions can be discussed on different type of headings. One, the objective of administrative study means why we have to study public administration. Two, history of the study of public administration. Three, importance of the development of a science of administration and politics administration dichotomy. This is one of the important uh, foundations of understanding public administration. Again, relationship between public opinion and administration and indispensability of the civil service. These are the major contributions. Along with this, he contributed comparative perspective of administration, study of administration. According to Woodrow Wilson, the primary objective of administrative study is to discover what a government can do and to discover how it could be cone in a better manner. To quote Woodrow Wilson, it is the object of administrative study to discover first what government can properly and successfully do and secondly how it can do these proper things with the utmost possible efficiency and at least possible cost either of money or of energy. Actually he said why the people are studying administration what we are expecting from administration. One, how government will do. Two, how efficiently we can do. Three, how we economically we do the things more effectively. Wilson postulated that prior to the 18th century, the activities of the government were not as complex as they were in the 19th century. Political scientists during that period framed constitutions, that is laws, for various countries and the administrative systems implemented them without any problem. The focus of all political thinkers was on framing the laws and the implementation of such laws was treated as natural corollary which required little scientific analysis and thought. Once a law was made, it was considered as implemented as the administration could force it down on people without much resistance. This was possible because populations of various countries were less and there were no complex systems of public revenues, public debts, etc. In short, according to Wilson, in the 18th century and prior to it, the question that bothered all political scientists was how to make a constitution and not how to implement it. According to Wilson, the 19th century presented a contrasting picture to the above. Populations had increased and the governmental activities had become extremely complex. The advent of an industrial society had thrown up problems of an extremely complex nature which the government was expected to solve. Added to this is the concept of welfare state which required the government to enter into the almost every field of human endeavor. The activities of the government were not dictated by the constitution but by the wishes of the people. This is the difference between a 18th century and the 19th century according to Wilson. The 18th century was how to make a rule was the important issue. Once rule is made, the people has to follow. But whereas 19th century is concerned, a complex problems of society has entered. We are talking of a welfare system, 
people's demands are increasing and the government has to solve various issues. These are the dominant areas of the 19th century. Hence, the importance of administration has slowly increased in the 19th century compared with 18th century. To understand it further, to quote Wilson, there is scarcely a single duty of government which was once simple which is now complex. Government once had but a few masters, it now has scores of masters. Majorities formerly only underwent government, they now conduct government. Where government once might follow the whims of a court, it must now follow the views of a nation. The functions of the government are every day becoming more complex and difficult. They are also vastly multiplying in number. Administration is everywhere putting its hands into new undertakings. According to Wilson, such as an environment where the government is omnipresent and omnipotent had brought about a situation where not only framing a constitution, that is making laws, was difficult but implementing the constitution, implementing laws was even more difficult and complex. So, the Wilson's understanding of the 18th century and the 19th century is very clear that in 18th century all the political scientists have struggled to frame the constitution, whereas coming to the 19th century there is a lot of changes come in the societies. Hence, the implementation or execution of the constitution is the basic issue in the 19th century. To quote him again, it is getting to be harder to run constitution than to frame one because knowledge has increased, various issues has come. To writing in a constitution has become very easy because already the experiments were made. Whereas, to run the constitution is the problematic one. Highlighting the difficulties in the implementation process, Wilson reiterate that the activities of the modern day government are increasing in complexity day by day. Every day the government discovers new functions and is compelled to discharge these functions with efficiency. So, the expectations of the people are becoming more and the people are demanding more. So, hence the complexity is increasing every day because government has to implement all the things as expected by the people within an efficient manner. Due to such an amorphous nature of functions, the practicing administrator finds it extremely difficult to comprehend the various facets of his job. Such a situation, according to Wilson, demands support from intellectuals in the form of systematic study of administration. There should be a science of administration which shall seek to straighten the paths of government to make its business less unfussiness, like to strengthen and purify its organization and to crown its dutifulness. Continuing his arguments, Wilson comments on the history of the administration. Why we are studying this administration at this stage? Having highlighted the importance of administration, Wilson lamented about the fact that the study of administration as a branch of the science of government was neglected by the political thinkers. His understanding is very clear. Politicians, political scientists, they are talking about the government, they are talking about the constitution. Government duty is that implementation or executing the functions. They are not studying the importance of administration. He says, the public administration is the latest fruit of political science tree. The political science tree, this is the latest fruit, means the public administration has depend upon each and everything for the political system and the government. Political scientists mainly concentrated on constitution, nature of state, sovereignty, popular powers, etc., but not on the administration. They were mostly concerned with the problems of democracy and monarchy. He says, in the history of administration, though the administration was practiced by all the states in the world, Political scientists and other people concentrated only understanding the nature of state. What is democracy? What is monarchy? What is dictatorship? These type of things, but not concentrated on the study of public administration. He further said, up to our own day, all the political writers whom we now read had thought, argued, dogmatized only about the constitution of government, about the nature of the state 
the essence and seat of sovereignty, popular power and kindly prerogative about the greatest meanings lying in the heart of government and the high ends set before the purpose of government by man's nature and man's aims. So, the whole issue is very clear. The discussion of the political scientist, framing of constitution, discussing the nature of state, discussing the popular power and the sovereignty according to various issues related to the country, but not about the administration and administrative related activities. The central field of controversy was that great field of theory in which monarchy rode tilt against democracy, in which oligarchy would have built for itself strongholds of privilege and in which tyranny sought opportunity to make good its claim to receive submission from all competitors. Amidst this high warfare of principles, administration could command no pass for its own consideration. The question was always, who shall make law and what shall that law be? The other question, how law should be administered with enlightenment, with equity, with speed and without friction, was out aside as practical detail which clerks could arrange after doctors had agreed upon principles. In America, the administrative science was considered by Wilson as foreign science developed by the French and German professors. So, in this background, Woodrow Wilson argues that we have to develop a administration or we have to develop a science of administration according to our needs, our country's environment and other things. So, this is one of the important aspect he says, administration is different from country to country. Each country's administrative science depend upon its nature of state, its demand of the people based on its constitutional things. He further explained that the reasons for the growth of administration in European countries according to him for the two reasons. One, Europe the governments were independent of popular assent and second the desire to keep government a monopoly. Wilson concluded that the popular sovereignty in America had prevented the way of development of science of administration. He empathetically stated it is harder for democracy to organize administration than for monarchy. Americans had enthroned public opinion as governing principle. So, the basic difference between a European government and European administrative science and American systems are according to him are very clear that European governments having independent popular support, but they want to run the government as a monopolistic government. Government is on everything. Whereas, Americans are different. He says that American administrative system, American political system is depend upon principle of public opinion. How we are going to run only based on the public opinion. European governments are established monarchic governments from there they have come to popularity, but the government system are monarchical. Whereas, an American system, government, American government started in the democratic principles and developed democratic governments. Hence, running government in America is harder because in a democratic system people demands are more. Wilson asserted that the need of development of the science of administration in America by thought, principle and aim putting aside the concentration of constitutional principles. Thus, Wilson outlined the history of the study showed how it was comparatively new development in political science very cognitively presented the necessity and value of the study and indicated the methods by means of which it ought to be carried on. Wilson's important point, now we can understand very clearly that people has to develop in a constitution, a rule, a law, administrative science according to the nature of that state, nature of the government and the people ambitions. Hence, his important aspect is the political scientist whatever he has did in Europe is not going to be accepted in total in America. Just has given an example, I have seen a murderer who is sharpening his knife. He want to kill somebody, he is sharpening his knife. I want to learn how to sharpen the knife, not to kill somebody to protect ourselves. He says, we have to learn various techniques and tools from other countries and other democracies. 
but not exactly what they are implementing. We have to change them as per our need according to our interest. This is what Woodrow Wilson explained the understanding taking about administration from other countries to America. So far we have discussed about Woodrow Wilson's contribution to the study of administration. We understand, we discuss three important issues. Number one, understanding the importance of article of the study of administration as said by the Woodrow Wilson. Two, history of administration, how it is different for an European system and also in American system. Third, how the constitutions and everything are framed, the difference of administration between 18th century, 19th century, how the societies are entered into the complex systems, whereas administration is the complex one. Whatever we have discussed so far is a one part of the article of the Woodrow Wilson, the study of administration. Next part we are going to discuss about other important areas.